300,000 people die, that's, that's business as usual. How long do you take statins? How long do you plan to live? First of all, the, how do they do it is money. Money is big. Money, uh, if I give grants, you can study what I'm going to give you a grant for. So they direct a lot of research with their billions and billions of dollars. And, uh, and it was actually interesting, the British Journal of Medicine uh, had a, a review uh, looking at the same research and determining if, if the research was funded by government money or the research was funded by private money like pharmaceutical agency. The results came out four to five times more in the favor of the private industry when they paid for it, as compared to when it was just government money uh, without any special interest behind it. So right away, there's a manipulation of the data. You go, well, you mean these guys are cheating? I go, well, they're selecting the data to fit. Why? Because if I'm getting a grant, uh, and I write back, I say, oh, sorry, pharmaceutical, I checked all your stuff and it doesn't work. Uh, I'm not going to get another grant from them. So are the doctors lying? Well, they're not lying, but they, they pick data that okay. supports their point. So they already have a conclusion before they even did the experiment. Okay, even in a double-blind study. Yeah, that's a, there's no such thing as a double-blind study. Okay, because yeah. people bring their own preconceptions to any study. Absolutely. And maybe even the pharmaceuticals are choosing which things to fund because they know they'll get the results. Absolutely, and one of the things they're trying to get rid of are people who respond to the placebo effect because the placebo effect throws the data right off the chart. Uh, a, a simple fact is this, and people are, might be upset, but the, the, the drugs like Prozac uh, in laboratory tests are no better than a sugar pill. And that's just, how many billions of dollars a day on this planet are spent buying Prozac yes. or statin drugs. Statin drugs help less than 3% of the people that take them. And in fact, they cause uh, side effects that are dangerous in about 23%. So you help 3% with a drug, 23% are getting toxic from the drug, uh, and, and the idea is these are drugs that, uh, how long do you take statins? How long do you plan to live? Yeah. It's like, oh my God, that's a, you know, uh, they're drug they're dealers. They're cash cows. They're they drug, are drug dealers. dealers. They're good drug dealers. And I would call you out on placebo effect, but this has been well studied. You know, 60 Minutes has done things about that. One, you know, a third of the cases isn't far off for, you know, it, it having a benefit on the sugar pill. So Absolutely. We, we know that's true. And when I talk to people I know in the States, my family members, my relatives, my dad, I'm like, what's going on? And he's, oh, I'm on this statin. I'm on this oh. cholesterol drug. I'm on this. I'm on this. I'm like, really? Is there something that wrong with you? Like, everyone's medicated there. Uh, yeah, it's pushed beyond any belief because, it, look, it's advertised every 10 minutes on television. There's a new drug or a drug, and it's put into their heads like, your life's not working right. <gasps> this drug, look at the happy people. See, they've taken the drug and how happy they are. And people buy that story, uh, uh, and drugs kill uh, over 300,000 people a year. Pharmaceutical drugs kill about 300,000 people a year. Uh, and everybody's, oh, 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 that's just the cost of doing medicine. And yet they have a war on drugs, which kill less than 30,000 people a year. And all of a sudden you got a war because 30,000 people died. 300,000 people died. That's, that's business as usual. It's like, wow. And most people would blow their mind with those stats, but I think you're probably right. As in this whole huge war on drugs we have around the planet, all of the overdoses, all of the shocking stories and the things you see in movies, 30,000 deaths versus 300,000 due to pharmaceutical drug death. Prescribed. Prescribed yes. by a doctor, well, yes. that ad that you saw on television, yes. and then you have it. Yeah, that says a lot. Now, how can they actually control the discussions in medical schools? It's one thing if they control the studies. How can they control what people are talking about, what where people does, are teaching? Where does funding come from? Where does money come from in a medical school? Who gets paid? Doctors get paid. They get paid to prescribe drugs. They have these young women, you know, that you pick. Who are the drug reps? You look at them, you line them up, there's a few guys over there, but most of them are all these pretty young women. Why? They walk in the lab, give a smile, uh, here's, here's some samples, hand these out, and, and the next thing you know, then the doctor is prescribing their patients to those drugs. That's, there's a story, there's even movies about that, okay? That's a real story. The schools get money from pharmaceutical agencies, and research, I said, too. is big. Research is big. Uh, people don't understand, when I was doing, when I was teaching at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine, um, I gave six lectures a year, and the government at that time uh, and the people were like up in arms, just like, you pay these professors this much money, and some of them like Lipton only teach six classes in a year? And, and when the truth came out, I said, yeah, why? When I get a grant, the school gets an extra 56% of whatever the grant was back then. So if I got a $100,000 grant, 
the school was given $56,000 to have me have the grant. They call it overhead. Mm -hmm. And when they put the numbers together, the researchers were bringing in nearly half of the, uh, of the money to run a university. So all of a sudden they turn around and go, yeah, don't kick the cash cow. If it's six lectures, he's still bringing money and paying more than his salary and supporting the school. So research is a very big commodity at a university because it offsets their expenses. Okay, so it's a racket. It's it is a racket. And all these pristine, like these universities, you look up at these hollowed schools and these noble things behind the scenes, Money. It's a lot of dirty money. Absolutely. Uh, look, I, I mean, I was required to get a grant. That's what allowed me to be there. Well, I said, where do you get your money from? Well, you can get it from government, but government money is less and less every year. Private sources, uh, Muscular Dystrophy Association, American Cancer Society, all these societies uh, support, and pharmaceutical straight cash money, cash cow. Okay. How do we break this cycle? How do you fight these huge companies? Um, basically stop buying the product and you say but how can I stop buying the product and the answer is well empower yourself because you're the one uh, that controls all this any drug that affects you you gotta understand this if I take a drug and it affects me the reason why it affects me is because I have a natural equivalent of that drug in my own biology you don't take a drug and, and it affects you and, and you have a receptor for that drug uh, like you were having this protein receptor for a drug you may never take that would be silly so if you have a receptor for a drug, then by definition, that receptor was already there because there was a natural drug. So uh, in smoking pot, everyone, oh, no, there's a drug called tetrahydrocannabinol. And guess what? You have receptors for it because you make your own. <laughs> so the idea is this. Well, if you, if you want to have the effect of the drug, do you have to take an outside drug? And I say, no, you have to change your consciousness because you already manufacture every equivalent of a drug right now. And the idea is... If you're not manufacturing it, then that means your consciousness is not supporting you in your health. And it's really an adjustment of consciousness, not an adjustment of your biology. So it's a mindset shift that we don't need the solution in a pill, that we're not victims, that it's yes. not a fatalist you know, way of looking at life, that your future is predetermined. That well, we you see, need. that's the old genetic story. Oh, right. you've got this cancer gene. There is no cancer gene. That's an absolute truth. I can say it right here. There is no gene that causes cancer, not one. And I say, well, yeah, but... Look, Angelina Jolie, she had a double mastectomy because she had the BRCA1 gene. And I go, yeah, 50%, uh, 50% of the women with the BRCA1 gene never get the cancer. What's the point? If the gene causes cancer, how can 50% of the women that have the gene not get the cancer? And the answer is, the gene alone is not causing the cancer. It's associated with it, but it doesn't cause. You have to have some life stimulus kick it off and then we'll select that gene. Okay? And what would that stimulus be? Uh, mostly in cancer, anger. Uh, is that proven, uh, or is that just a theory? No, they're, they're, oh, there's a collective nature of who, who are the cancer patients. What's a characteristic of a cancer patient? Most of them are very upset in their lives. They're not happy, they're not you know, releasing their emotions, stresses, holding them in, bottling them in. Uh, and the chemistry of, you know, stress is a chemical. <laughs> uh, and the chemical, here's, here's a simple fact. Stress causes uh, at least up to 90% of doctor visits. You say, well, how can stress do this? And the answer is very simple. Stress causes a hormone called, uh, stress hormones, cortisol, to be released in the body. I say, what does cortisol do? I say, number one, it causes the blood in the viscera, the guts, where maintenance of the body and healing comes from all the organs. It causes the blood vessels to shut down because it pushes the blood to the arms and legs. Why? Stress means you're ready to run, fight or flight. So you push the energy to where you need it, arms and legs. Well, where do you get it from? Well, you squeeze the blood vessels in the gut. Well, this is growth. The viscera is growth. That's what the organs are for. Arms and legs are for protection. What's the point? If I'm in protection, I shut off growth. And more importantly, um, stress hormones shut off the immune system. A, a, a reason is just energy. The idea is if you're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger and you have a bacterial infection, how do you want to split the energy? How much energy do you want to run away and how much do you want to fight the immune, you know, with the immune system? The answer is the hell with the bacterium. I mean, if the, the tiger catches you, the bacteria is useless. It's, it's meaningless, you know? So when you're in stress, stress hormones shut down the immune system to conserve energy. Does, does the immune system use energy? Of course. If you've ever been really sick, you never even got out of bed, you have no energy. And if you're in fight or flight mode, you need the energy to deal with the world, okay? So stress hormones physically shut off the immune system. When you're under stress, that's when sickness starts to show up. 
Uh, in fact, it's so good at shutting off the immune system, doctors give patients who are going to receive a foreign organ, a graft of a kidney or a lung or whatever they're grafting, uh, that's foreign tissue. Uh, if you put a foreign organ in your body, your immune system's job is to eliminate it. So as they're transplanting an organ, they give the patient stress hormones at the same time because stress hormones will shut off the immune system so the organ won't be rejected right away. That's how effective it is. It's used therapeutically to shut off the immune system. Yeah, but everybody out there in this world right now, with a small exception, is under some level of stress. Stress of my job, stress of money, will I have health care, whatever it is. And I say, yeah, every one of those people is dripping stress hormones continuously in their body, and those hormones inhibit the immune system, and the result is illness. And if you stop the growth, you say, yeah, but I'm an adult. I don't need to grow. And I say, yeah, but you have to replace hundreds of billions of cells that you lose every day. Every, you know, every, as I said, you know, we just lost now 2 billion red cells. <laughs> <laughs> so Angelina shouldn't have got the double mastectomy. No, she, she has to recognize this. The gene didn't cause it, okay, it, but it's related to a lifestyle. And if you change the lifestyle, you don't, you don't have to worry about the gene because that behavior was passed from your mother to you, and she got it from your grandmother, and et cetera. And it's a history. It's, it's, it's Your parents, connected. who were also actors, starved for attention, angry, you no longer talk to them, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah.